Uh, I'd like to call to order the December 4, 2019 Council Committee of the Whole meeting. Would you please rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge to the Flag. Okay, we'll be starting with the presentation, but first uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, we have some new visitors and attendees this evening from the Hill School. Uh, I understand it is Miss Someone's <laughs> government class, and uh, uh, I guess they came tonight for us to prove that everything in the book is not the way it works. So, <laughs> thank you for attending. Uh, we're starting with a presentation from the Montgomery County Community College Pottstown campus. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Vicki Bastecki Perez, interim president of Montgomery County Community College. With me this evening is Frank Custer, the chair of the Board of Trustees and Farrell Dix, our Vice President of the West Campus. I want to thank the borough for the opportunity for the college to share some exciting initiatives that we are examining the feasibility to bring to our West Campus in Pottstown. It's a very exciting time as we recently celebrated 23 years of being a member of this community and we have a steadfast commitment to grow the pipeline of a talented workforce for the future. So thank you very much, Borough Council, for the opportunity for us to share this with you this evening. The first initiative that we'd like to share that our board has um, enabled us to explore the feasibility of having an immersion experience to stem interest in STEM careers for children as well as for adults and the greater community. We are exploring the feasibility of bringing a Challenger Center to our <coughs> West Campus in Pottstown. The Challenger Center concept was birthed after the tragedy of the shuttle. And in honor and in memory of the importance of that journey, of the opportunity to ensure our future as the United States of America in STEM education being leaders and continuing the good work that was intended. The Challenger Center has 43 centers worldwide and this, if it comes to fruition, would be the first Challenger Center in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So not only would it be a flagship to Montgomery County, to the Tri-County area, but also to Pennsylvania. So we're very excited about that. The Challenger Center is partnering now with colleges and universities because of our similar missions and values of being able to provide experiences not only in higher education, but our deep connections and roots in our communities, being able to provide pipeline from K-12 to higher education and ultimately to develop a talented workforce. The centers that are in existence have had the opportunity to have more than 5.5 million individuals experience a challenge center. In a given year, a single challenger center could garner in the tens of thousands of individuals to the campus and to our community. So I want to share with you a very brief video so that you can get a flavor of what it would be like. Thank you. A trip to a Challenger Learning Center brings classroom lessons to life. We 
work every day to engage students in science, technology, engineering, and math and inspire them to pursue careers in those fields. Spacecraft is mission control. We you over. Now the college is in what's considered a feasibility study to look at placement, potential uh, financial support for bringing the Challenger Center. With the center, it provides a wealth of networks across the entire world. Uh, one of the largest partners is with NASA themselves. Um, it provides complete curriculum for K-12 education provides opportunities for our own college students to intern, to experience the facility as learners, as well as business and industry to come in and use the center for team building, as well as other reasons. With the curriculum, not only are the um, different missions that are provided, provide students with an insight into STEM careers, but actually each youth that participates in the Challenger Center provides the opportunity for them to learn about various careers and each of the roles is directly connected with a career. So a student can perform a role and if they like it, we can talk with them about a career in accounting, computer science. It's not the goal of having everyone become an astronaut but really to stem and ignite fuel and interest in the STEM careers. So I just wanted to give you a heads up. Certainly um, this is a venture that requires a lot of partnerships, a lot of engagement. Vice President Dix has already been speaking with Superintendent Rodriguez about the possibilities not only for the Pottstown High School students, but also the um, K-8 students as well. Mm. No, this is um, this is a really exciting time for the college to explore this opportunity. We really believe that it will be a, a wonderful way to create a pipeline for future Montgomery County Pottstown campus STEM families. We're looking forward to it. The Challenger Center is a part of a wider, broader initiative that we have at the college. Maybe technical assistance again. It's up. Well, there we go. Okay, thank you. We are undergoing right now a visioning of our West Campus, which this particular presentation, one of the notables is we're considering the change of our West Campus in nomenclature and calling it our Pottstown Campus. And our Central Campus, located in Bluebell, then would become the Bluebell Campus. Mm -hmm. We feel that that would provide a lot more strength to our communities. It would be a better way to communicate with all of our stakeholders that Montgomery County Community College is located in Pottstown and is located in Bluebell, as well as our virtual campus. So this particular presentation has been shared um, with our Board of Trustees. It's also been shared with our County Commissioners. It is truly a draft. It is not complete. It is just something we're excited to begin sharing out. And we're going to be having an open forum coming up later this month to engage others in the community to provide input and to help inform the future of our Pottstown campus. Our Pottstown campus really is a quadrangle. When we look at the aerial view, we have our original building, South Hall, right off of College Drive. We also have our East High Street location here with our North Hall. Coming up 
we have our Hanover Street building, and then we have the Schuylkill River Heritage Greenway Association, our Sustainability and Innovation Hub. This particular hub here is the likely center that we're vetting right now for our STEM pavilion that would house that Challenger Center should it come to fruition. Mm. It's pretty typical for a college campus to have a quadra angle, but some of the challenges that we have in the Pottstown area is that we have more disparate buildings. We don't really have a college experience for our students connecting building by building and better connecting with our greater community. This is our North Hall, which is right off of the um, High Street. And then we also have, this is the back end of South Hall, which is connected by the underpass. There's the connector, and you can see that you can get to South Hall, which is our primary academic building. When we take a closer look at our South Hall, that original building from 1996, it's pretty invisible. It's pretty institutional. It really doesn't have any identity. Um, there are faculty offices. We have our student support. But if you're going down College Drive, pretty discreet and it doesn't really have uh, a lot um, from an outside and inviting perspective for our prospective students as well as for the community. This is our sustainability and innovation hub. We are fortunate to have the partnership with the Greenway Association and it's a quasi STEM building right now. It has um, hydroponics and aquaponics in there, and there are some wind turbines in the um, parking lot, and there are some 3D printing and some basic technology in that particular building. But, but again, it's one that does not have a lot um, of connection, and it's not fulfilling its potential from our leadership perspective. When we look at Hanover, which is over here, there's a very small parking lot. Again, it doesn't have really a distinct vibe at all. It just looks like a building that is present and it's very nondescript. Finally, we have some challenges with utilities that are sort of in between um, our buildings. And we also have a very important turnabout for our public transportation. But the turnabout does cause some traffic flow issues for us, and sometimes it can be unwieldy for pedestrian traffic. <coughs> so what we'd like to do is now talk a little bit about connecting the campus, providing a greater college experience and a greater community experience. We've been doing a lot of research, not only internally, but also with the Monco 2040 plan, Monco Forward, the Live, Work, Learn, and Invest concepts, our own strategic plan for the college, which has a complete <coughs> commitment to our West Campus, which goes through 2022. We have a facilities master plan, which finishes in 2022. And one of the buildings that's on the master plan that I'll be sharing with you is that South Hall is getting renovation through that particular plan. We've also had a lot of community conversations in the last few months. And Sarah and I have both had the privilege of being part of the Urban Land Institute um, study and had the pleasure of providing feedback on behalf of the college. So with all of that in mind, where did we start? Well, we literally started with a whiteboard and started sketching out what could the possibilities look like. How could we be creative and inspire ideation and innovation for our students and for our community? The Board of Trustees recently revised our mission and vision statements to not only focus on student success, but to have a very clear commitment to community engagement, being an economic driver and catalyst 
for change and providing a greater stability for financial and economic prosperity. So we had the opportunity, as I said, with the South Hall renovation of $4.25 million, which 50% is being sponsored by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We also recently received and announced a Title III grant of $2 million from the U.S. Department of Education to help support our Pottstown campus and support our students. Hmm. So where we're at today is enhancing not only our academic portfolio, but providing wellness opportunities for our students, enhancing sports. We're bringing e-sports, electronic sports activities in January to West Campus. And we're aligning our plans with the Pottstown Planning Plan. So what we're thinking about is we really need to have distinct gateways into our college. This is our primary gateway, but again, uh -huh. when I showed you the pictures, it's very nondescript until you get down College Drive. We also have a northern gateway with our North Hall right off of High Street. There's an opportunity to have a secondary gateway. And we're looking at the pavilion concept similar to Disney and other models where you're bringing pavilions and engagement activities within each of the areas. I had mentioned the STEM pavilion, which is our current innovation and sustainability hub, taking our South Hall and making it an innovation pavilion, the creativity pavilion, which would be our North Hall, which creativity and performing arts and then providing some outdoor connector spaces so that we perhaps may have community garden and market, some outdoor activity and recreation that can be used not only by the college students, but also by our community. We also have the opportunity, and we've been working with Valley Forge visitors and convention board on opportunities where we could bring groups in to help stimulate the economy in Pottstown as well. And finally, in our Hanover Street building, we would not only have our workforce development programs and our commerce pavilion, but we're also considering the opportunity to open this building up and have community, nonprofits, Montgomery County um, Social Services and other entities providing services or potential services on campus so that our community have access to complete services as well as our students at, at large. This type of concept, again, it's not in complete form, but this is the direction that we seem to be moving towards, will provide some definite thoroughfare fares and begin having a more robust college experience. So what might that look like to you coming down College Drive. We envision some type of gateway or entrance, some signage with digital signs, very similar to what you're seeing in many of the small towns, to welcome individuals, let them know that they are at a special destination, and then we can co-share the digital messages, whether they be college messages, they be community messages, or just generalization. We see this as being an urban field to give nod and pay homage and respect to the strong sense of history of Pottstown and have unifying walkways and pathways. So going back to that aerial view, and I want to focus your attention here to that outdoor recreation potential space and what that might look like, having some community gardens, perhaps having some small areas where we can have chefs or different restaurants have the ability, using the train as an asset and a backdrop to design, having some benches, having some tables, and then having the outdoor recreational space. Our North Hall would be located over in that direction. 
The STEM pavilion, which again would potentially house the Challenger Center as well as other assets that we will bring online, could have a facade, a video wall, where we could have not only um, pictures, messaging, but we could also have movies for the community, have um, drive-in type movies where you could sit outside and have this as a whole video wall. But if you can imagine coming down College Drive and seeing this um, images there to draw us into the area. The gateway that I had showed you earlier had the stanchions uh, with the digital signage and that's where these stars are. We envision also having some type of signage, similar signage, throughout the college experience so that there is, again, a sense of community, a sense of college community, and a destination feel. We also think these walkways and gateways, which will give our college students greater access to the community as well as the community greater access to the college, will also be a sense of pride for all of those involved. Some of the next steps, we're confirming our feasibility study. In addition to looking at the buildings and the academic um, assets and the programming that we have at our Pottstown campus, we are also working with an architect on a feasibility study looking at our exterior spaces, looking at those as engagement spaces and how the community in the 21st century use outdoor spaces. We've also even considered in our North Hall the very small parking lot that we have of 23 parking spaces, but maybe that might be a good place where we actually make it a green space. And it could be a small parklet, it could be an area where we have more community garden, it could be an area where we just put some park benches and have some nice green space as part of our campus and our greater community. Continue to explore partnerships, secure our architect for planning of our South Hall renovation. We're incorporating our grant activities and again continuing to engage our stakeholders. I want to th thank you for listening, thank you for your time, and um, again, this is just a preliminary concept, but Sarah <coughs> and I wanted to share with you what the preliminary findings are and what direction and what assets we may be bringing to the Pottstown campus. Sarah, is there anything you'd like to add? I'd just like to thank the Pottstown community since my um, leadership here about three months, I guess, at this point. I've had an opportunity to meet a number of you, uh, many people in the community, and I've listened to your comments and suggestions, and much of um, what you see today is based on feedback that we have received, and we're trying very much to listen to what uh, you feel that you need in Pottstown and um, provide that for you as best we can. Thank you for your partnership. Is there anything we, the borough, could do to help you forward this? Yes, Sarah and I will be following up with yep. you, as I, well I as so. many right. stakeholders in the room. Um, <laughs> but we wanted to share in this public forum first mm -hmm. some of the concepts. But it's really a collective work. It's a collective work not only from the college, but from all of you as our partners in this endeavor. So yes, we will be following up with you. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for your time and your interest. Okay, next we have a presentation from Pottstown Trees, Inc. Mr. Hilton. So uh, this is the uh, fourth year I'm coming before you to talk about uh, tree trimming and maintenance in the borough. Uh, today we received notice from the Health and Wellness Foundation that we received a $35,000 grant. Uh, which my wife and I are matching the 35, so we have $70,000 to do. Oh, can you get closer to the mic, please? Okay. So, uh, we received notice that we received a $35,000 grant from the Health and Wellness Foundation, which my wife and I are matching. So we'll have $70,000 to uh, maintain, uh, to cut down dead trees, uh, replace them with other trees, uh, new trees, and uh, tree trees for emerald ash borer. What we've done in the last three years uh, is uh, I will be sending to the 
assuming council approves this, I'll be sending to the borough manager a list of the work to be done for his approval. Once he's approved that, we'll send a letter to all the affected property owners, the adjacent property owners, saying this is what we're planning to do, uh, no cost uh, to you. And if you have any concerns, uh, here's the, my email address, here's my phone number, you can give me a call. Um, and then we'll proceed with the work. The tree trimming and removal would be in January, February, and March. New trees would come in uh, late March or April. Uh, in May, we'll be uh, treating all the ash trees for the third time uh, for emerald ash borer. Uh, last time we treated 144 ash trees, we may plan to do a few more. So um, that's what I'm proposing. Council has agreed to this the last three years. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I have a question. Um, Tom, out of the trees that were recently planted at the nursery, how many of them survived? There are 70 live trees as of the fall. Uh, two of them would be big enough to transplant next spring. Mr. Lenhart is already trying to place dibs on them for the for, uh, Riverfront Park. Uh, the rest of them will be another a couple of years. So we lost 30 up. from the seedlings that were planted? Yeah, we lost 30, which considering that we planted them at the worst possible time of the year, which was July, mm -hmm. as a result of the delay in getting the, the topsoil put in. So um, considering that, it turned out pretty well. Yeah, um, along with your own inventory that you do on the trees and everything, um, do you accept requests from residents if, if they need something done? If it's in the public right-of-way, I and mean, we don't do anything on private property, but right. if it's in the public right-of-way, somebody calls something to my attention. Uh, the nice thing, frankly, about private money is you do have discretion about what's in the best interest of the borough. In the letter that you may all have, planting new trees would be basically on our major thoroughfares because the most people are going to see them. But I already had a uh, call from a real estate agent who said that there's a sidewalk that's lifted and she can't, the, the property owner is uh, poor, I don't know. And uh, I said, I'll take a look at it, assuming I get permission to go forward. So if, if, you get a, if I get a request and it seems it's in the public interest, I certainly want to consider it. Okay. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Another presentation, Carousel with Foxcat. Hello, Jim Lyons, Foxcat guys going, Adam Sager. Uh, from the Boss Town Carousel. Uh, some of this is repeat, guys, so bear with us. Uh, we have some plans for you. We revamped the addition that we had uh, done due to some concerns that uh, uh, Justin and uh, Keith showed us. Um, so we went over these with the borough staff. Uh, we're here tonight just to get your blessing on minor changes to fall into the floodplain. Um, <coughs> excuse me, also to, um, when talking to uh, your staff, we need, we, we request the waiver of a minor subdivision plan that, that we had talked about. Uh, since the borough owns the property, you're, you're kind of going through your own rules. Uh, we do want to abide by the storm water and everything else and we'll present grading uh, plans and the, the storm water management plan. But the minor subdivision from your engineer's perspective really didn't apply here other than the grading and whatnot and especially since you own the building uh, you have the right to waive that. So that's what we're here to ask for uh, today so that we could get the project started and hopefully get it finished before summer. Uh, we're ready to go. We have all the funds in place. It's probably an eight hundred thousand to a million dollar addition on a building. Um, so we're we're looking forward to that. If any of you have the opportunity, we did put in our uh, patios uh, with our fire pit and water feature, which turned out really well. Um, so so.
so we are enhancing the property substantially. Uh, but we need this step to move forward uh, so that we can finish the drawings, go out to bid for the project, and, and get the project started. Uh, the other thing that we had uh, talked about, and I think that we're about time, and Chuck, I, I don't know if you remember, but we're probably time to renew that lease. We'd like to get pretty close, so we'd like to go for a, a, at least a long-term lease if we're going to invest this money in the building. Um, and we have some other options, too, that we can discuss. So essentially, that's that's what we're here to, one, show you the plans, the finished plans. It will include a mezzanine level in the carousel building. Uh, but we need to proceed forward, I guess, from Justin's perspective and then the engineer's perspective to waive that minor subdivision plan and accept the grading uh, plan and stormwater management plan enough so that we can get started and, and pull all the permits and make this process happen. So I have an additional set of plans. I think Justin has one as well. I'm just going to hand it up to uh, Jimmy and everybody can review it at their own time. Uh, the, the plans, as Jim did indicate, there's nothing substantially changed from what was presented way back from the original concept when I appeared before the council last October. Then we showed the uh, actual drawings through our architect. These are just a, a step forward with that uh, to simplify any questions that were posed at last time. Um, one update, I was here a couple months back with regard to a liquor license for the carousel. The uh, restaurateur who was going, who was uh, proposing to move in once we got approval uh, was not the successful bidder at that point in time. So that is unfortunately not on the table at the present time. If and when another Montgomery County, preferably obviously it would make everything easier, another Montgomery County license comes available, um, someone on behalf of the carousel will come back and we'll go through the same steps that took place beforehand. So we would just ask that um, you review it and any questions, obviously we're always available to answer those. Okay. Do you have copies for everyone? Yeah, I, I, I can, I'll this be more than happy plan. to provide more copies of Justin, just give me an email. I think you have a few copies now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and Jim, I just looked at the current lease based upon an addendum from 2016, and it right now it looks like there are uh, a term of eight additional five-year terms. So I mean, you have the property locked up for a relatively long period of time under the current lease. So it would just continue to renew under those five-year increments unless you have some other idea. Yeah, I remembered something about when we opened up that it was supposed to be, re I couldn't remember. Uh, I mean, that's that, 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 that was the trigger, but once that happened, then it's eight, five-year okay. terms, so it's 40 years of... Uh, that's satisfied, and anything else we would want to talk about, we can absolutely talk about in the future. Yeah, I think it's up to, the, obviously, council, if they would like to continue with the, for loosely purpose, uh, landlord-tenant relationship, or if there is some type of relationship that they need to move forward and to take ownership of the property, so it's no longer on the borough's lap. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And also, uh, as trees think, we didn't get quite that much, but Health and Wellness did uh, today notify us that we did get a grant for 25000 to enhance the mini golf course and put shade up. So uh, much needed shade. Uh, so we'll be working on that project as well and probably be talking to you people in January about that one as well. So, okay. Uh, that's a positive though. It's, good. We've made some good improvements, I think, on the course now. Uh, Michael's been very helpful. Uh, kudos to all your staff, Justin and Keith. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and Michael have really helped <coughs> us out. We're working well together. So <coughs> I'm happy. happy with that. And Dr. Susanna is so valuable. So. Oh, I was going to announce it, but I said yeah. she Superhero, superhero Princess Party February. Okay. So I would just like to clarify a couple things. Um, 
based on your request. So you would, you're requesting a waiver of land development, whether it's determined to be a minor or a major. Yeah. You're, you're, you're requesting a waiver of that and, and any fees that would be you typically come along with that. You're, you're agreeing to provide a grading plan and a stormwater management mm -hmm. plan. Um, what is your re request as far as fees for those? Um, We'd be open to the reasonable fees for your engineer to review. We don't want you to assume the cost for that. Uh, so you'd be open to pay engineering review review fees, but you. What about the per actual permit fee? You guys own the building. You yeah, you own the building. That's <coughs> the way I look at it. Right? We can waive it, but we need to know what you're requesting. We are requesting that we you waive it. Okay. <coughs> now, as we get into the project. There obviously are going to be other permits that are that are required: a building permit, HVAC, electrical, plumbing. We, you know, for life safety reasons, we would have to make you submit those those permits and follow the guidelines of those of those of those permits. And as we had done in the past, uh, the borough did waive those fees. Okay. In all the that's correct. In what we did, so we would assume that. We would assume that we'd do the same thing. Okay. For that, we'd obviously pass muster, but mm -hmm. and put another million dollars into your bill. Right. Be nice. so, okay. But um, uh, and also we do have that still that lease arrangement with the borough concerning the mini golf, so we put money into that as well, which is a criteria for us to get that grant money that Jim just talked about as well. So we're enhancing the popularity, we're enhancing the knowledge of the community to come out, and we're also enhancing the property as well, while we're the tenants for both of those properties. All right. Thank okay. you. <coughs> For the sake of time, uh, I'd like to ask our solicitor, could you prepare a memo for council uh, explaining what the waiver of this fee would entail as far as waiving a minor land development? Sure. Sure, I'll, I'll put that together for no, council to review. Discussing it all now. If you'll put it in writing, get it out to us, and we'll study that. Certainly. Very good. Okay. Under subcommittees, uh, infrastructure, Vice President Culp. Uh, yeah, we didn't have too much of a meeting, but um, Public Works, uh, at the time we had our meeting, Wilson wasn't done yet. I don't know how far that's gotten, but they couldn't do any other jobs until that one was finished. Um, sewer work's about done. Popular, Poplar Street was next. I guess there's the work on the closed loop is uh, working on the fiber optics and getting everything to coordinate. Uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, Memorial Park Phase 3 is complete. Um, the playground equipment and rubber surfing is done. ADA access paths, grading to address drain, uh, drainage and paving. Fencing for pedestrian and vehicular control. Riverfront Park ash tree removal be is beginning to begin, uh, has begun. And uh, one third of it's complete for the area along the pathways. And there's five days in December they were working on that. Pollock Park testing is underway. Soil samples are collected and monitoring wells installed. Uh, first sampling event in December. Results will be used to draft the DEP compliant remediation plan. Memorial Park ball field restoration complete, pending grass growth. Field one's ready for spring, and field two may be ready by summer. And um, that's all I have for that. Very good. Economic development, uh, Ms. Lee Clark. Good evening, What's new and exciting? <laughs> good evening, councilors, Madam Mayor. Uh, good to be with you this evening. Excuse the voice. Um, so uh, I have it on good authority, and I've seen it with my own eyes that the barrels are full at J.J. Radigan's Brewing Company on High Street, and they hope to be serving some of that fine brew this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, I would encourage you to go to the I Pick Pottstown site to uh, read an article which was written by Paid's marketing person. Um, we have a hemp facility, most people don't know it, here in the borough. 
because of security reasons. You may remember that there was a group, Agronomed and Agronic Agrikind, that came when they first applied to the Commonwealth for a grow license for medical marijuana. Uh, they were not successful in that first bid. They were successful in the second one. Unfortunately, it was for Chester County, and their grow facility went to Chester. However, they were really engaged, and they really liked what they saw in Pottstown. So they have brought their hemp processing facility here, and that will employ about 10 full-time positions and then more people as harvest time goes. Um, it is gone from double-digit farmers growing hemp to um, over 300 farmers in the Commonwealth um, having hemp farms production. So we see it as a good community impact and something that obviously PAID is very interested in as well as I'm sure the borough and you as council members are in because it is an industry that is having a rebirth and innovation and it will mean jobs in the future, highly technical jobs. Um, along with J.J. Radigan's Brewing Company, I want to talk about all of the fun things. I also want to talk about all of the business owners who have really put their own time and treasure into not only their buildings, but also making High Street look festive. So you may notice that including part um, and some of the building owners like um, the Four Elements and Once Upon a Time Consignment, they have been putting uh, Studio 36, they've been adopting the planters and they, we are having a planter competition oh. and Madam Mayor will be announcing those winners. Uh, she is the final judging uh, there is a judging panel going out tomorrow at noon, and at the tree lighting, those winners will be announced um, in three categories. Don't ask me what they are. I've been told four times, and I can't remember. So, <laughs> um, so uh, the alley will be having, uh, they've been decorating. There will be a tree going in the alley on Friday, um, but the real celebration is Saturday, December 7th. 10 to 12 is Snacks with Santa at the complex. Um, and then 12 to 2, cookie decorating at Beverly's Pastry Shop. And then we really sort of flipped it. And in addition to Santa coming, we also wanted to have fun for the adults. Um, we are an adult town. We don't have a lot of bookstores and toy stores. So we thought, well, the adults should be encouraged to play as well. So um, Santa will be arriving by dragon boat on his very own throne, crossing the Schuylkill to Riverfront Park. Uh, he will be crossing the Schuylkill starting at 2 o'clock. I will be there at 2.15 in Riverfront Park. He will make a stop in the Innovation Center and then go by fire truck up to the alley. Um, let's see, what else do we have going on on Saturday? Uh, 2.45, Santa arrives at the alley. From 3 to 6.30, the official downtown Pottstown holiday stroll, you will be able to pick up your cards either at the terminal, your bingo cards, or down at the Schuylkill River Heritage Place, and they will all be a theme from A Christmas Story. So you will go around and you will be on a scavenger hunt, and you'll visit various businesses that have parts of the movie at their particular location. Um, and then we will all gather um, starting at 6.30. You should be making your way to Smith Family Plaza. And that is from 7 to 7.30 is the tree lighting. Those announcements will be made about the planners. And then those of us that have tickets to A Christmas Story at Still River will enjoy a performance starting at 8 o'clock. So I'm assuming that those are also out. But by any chance, that there are extra tickets available for the play? Or? I do not no. know. Um, I went on Still River and got them, and there was still, uh, about a week ago, there was still some uh, there. <laughs> um, certainly Sunday will be a festive day. I don't want to slight the Go Forth group and holiday tours. I do understand the trolley is sold out, but there are still tickets for the holiday house tour. And there's a wonderful concert uh, happening at first. Baptist. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot. Happy holidays, everybody. There is much to celebrate in Pottstown <clears throat> with economic development. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Saturday's my birthday. So they're doing all this for me. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
Transportation, Vice President Culp. No meeting. Okay. Ordinance Review Committee, Councillor Bosco. No meeting. Hating. Hating. Uh, efficient Methods, Councillor Lebedinsky. No meeting. Okay. How about the Emergency Services Report? Chief? No meeting, no calls? Right. Well, we had a couple calls. Oh, okay. uh, one of them was a, a child playing with matches, and we've addressed that. We're working with the county to get some help into that family to address that, which is huge. Uh, reaching out to the county, they said it was the first time someone's really reached out in a while for a juvenile fire setter, and we, we really want to get that message out about that. Uh, that was our call that was significant as far as damage. But other than that, we had 79 fire calls. We got 358 EMS calls, and um, the big thing we got going on is December 21st, Santa's coming by fire truck throughout the borough. So anyone that has a Facebook or, you know, I know you've already posted, but uh, we're looking forward to that. That'll be a fun day. I think it starts at 12 and goes till about dark. And then the last thing was uh, we did have uh, our biannual drill for Limerick and uh, all the departments in the borough. Evidently, including the mic, everybody did a good job. So Wonderful. we'll get our review from the county, just let me get honest. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> now, we, I think Good we job. did very well from all indications. So and that's my report. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Human relations. Ms. Lemigood. Thank you, counselors, council president, and um, Madam Mayor. Um, the month of December is full of religious, uh, religious celebrations. We have Hanukkah. Uh, Christmas and Kwanzaa, and December 10th is Human Rights Day. Um, in 1948, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Um, it's a document proclaiming the inalienable rights which everyone is entitled um, to as human beings, uh, regardless of race, color, religion, sex, language, political, other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth, or other status. And the 2019-20 theme is Stand Up for Human Rights with a focus on youth. Um, the December uh, commission meeting will be held next Tuesday, December the 10th at 6 p.m. in council chambers. And the Inman from the mosque in Pottstown is scheduled to make a presentation. Um, and all are welcome to attend. And the commission wishes a joyous holiday season to all, and including the closing of the first decade in 2000. Very good. Uh, the next two, the land bank and the library, I have an email from Deb Penrod. She can't be here tonight to give the presentation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So may, maybe Monday? I don't know. I, I mean, I can, significant? I can touch on it. Um, we approved our 2020 meeting dates. Uh, we discussed the submission of the PHAR grant, um, which uh, will help us to acquire uh, six to seven properties over the next two years. The match that's used for that grant is the $20,000 that the borough has set aside as, as seed money. Um, so that definitely was helpful in being able to um, make the application for that grant. <coughs> and um, they hope to make their first acquisition next year. So at this point, they're getting their, their website in order and starting to work on um, policies for qualifying interested developers. The way that it'll work is by law, the, the properties that are going to be available through the land bank have to be posted um, onto the website. So as soon as we have the website up and running and we have the criteria established for um, qualified developers, uh, we'll let you know so that people can start looking at uh, properties. Okay. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Frickett Center, uh, Councillor Kirkland. Yes. Um, uh, first, I, I'd like to give kudos to the local volunteers who's working there because um, I guess at, at this point, you know, all the rest is basically out of the picture or, or, they're, or they're virtually invisible at this point. And the local volunteers are pretty much there every day. Um, you know, holding down the fort and making sure that the kids have something to do uh, and making sure these programs are still um, being being done. So I'd like to give the uh, local volunteers credit uh, for, for what they're doing there on a daily basis. Um, 
uh, I know they, they are uh, continuing the after school homework program. Uh, they're also, uh, the karate program, the soccer program is still active um, at, the, at the borough or at the um, Ricketts Center. Um, f this Friday and Saturday, uh, volunteers, children, uh, and, the, and the wall volunteers will be uh, helping the uh, Sunnybrook with their Christmas gift giveaway program. They'll be packing bags and things like that. So um, um, this is not verified, but I understand. And is Lydia here? From okay, um, I understand that maybe you can verify this. Cleaning and painting the first two weeks of next. Year. Yeah. So if you want to speak on that, or if you want to anything else you'd like to put out there, I appreciate sure. that. So I did have a few updates. Thank you for having me this evening. Um, <clears throat> so we do know that we're planning on having the center open seven days a week with a focus on after school weekends, um, days when schools are closed and summertime all being very important times to offer the high quality calendar of programs and activities that we're looking forward to offering. Um, you know, we know our programs will be engaging, well structured and responsive to the needs of the community, families and youth. Um, right now we're in the process of um, hiring exceptional staff to and also engaging high quality instructors. So we do have positions posted on Indeed. Um, if anybody's interested in taking a look at those, I, I would love that. We are starting to do interviews next week for the positions. I believe there's some staffers here today, so if you, I'd love for you to talk to them. Great, so we have awesome. the center director, program coordinators, and center receptionists for staffing, but we also look forward to contracting high qualified um, instructors to be able to lead classes as well. We do have, um, we have had contractors and our facilities manager walk through the building and we look forward to making improvements to the building, specifically around safety and security, um, as well as some aesthetic updates to the building, like paint, ceiling tiles, and flooring. Um, we anticipate this will need to be done in phases, but we're looking at the first two weeks of the year to do some of the painting and different things like that that we can get done in a really quick turnaround time. Um, and then with more improvements to come in the future where we could do it um, sections at a time. Um, so again, we do anticipate that we'll probably be closed the first two weeks of January to do some of those renovations. We also will need to install computers, copiers, phone system, tables, chairs, refrigerators, and program supplies and equipment at that time. Um, we are a volunteer-led organization, so we're looking forward to engaging volunteers in many ways. Uh, currently, to offer our existing programs, we have over 600 volunteers that make our programs possible, and we're looking forward to engaging more volunteers. We do have a volunteer coordinator, and um, so we do an application process for our volunteers that includes a basic background check, um, as well as a tour and information, um, and then our volunteer coordinator generally matches volunteers up with their skill set to what makes sense for their volunteer opportunities. Um, we're also looking at a key card check-in system similar to like what the YMCA or other gyms would have where when you come into the building you scan in. So that will be really helpful in allowing us to ensure the safety of everyone in the building as well as track program participation to be able to offer information and data around who's using the building and how often and frequently and for what programs. Um, that will also allow us to make sure we're offering responsive programming. If something is being offered that's not being well attended, we can replace it with something else that would be appealing to the community. Um, as always, collaboration is very important to us and critical to our program success. So we're looking forward, and I have um, had some great conversations with community organizations and churches, and we're looking forward to working together to serve the community. Um, a big thing for me is that I don't want to see us repeat services. I don't want to see us spend time and energy on offering services that are already available in the community. I would rather us be really good stewards of connecting people to the existing services in the community and helping to fill gaps and needs. So um, things like, you know, if someone's having issues with hunger, we're connecting them with the local food pantries um, and working with the churches to ser serve the community really well. Um, I do see this as um, a learning process. So we want to be responsive to the community. So what we might be offering um, will continue to grow and change as we learn more about what the community would like to see in the building. So, Good. Um, thank you very much thank for so allowing much. me to provide an update. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, that, was, that was my, my report. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, with all of the 
groups and individuals that came forward to talk, express their thoughts and volunteer to help. All that interest through the summer and now I hope at least half of it comes to fruition. So anybody interested in helping, uh, they were welcome you, absolutely welcome you. Uh, next, Pottstown School District. Councilor Lindsay, anything for us? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so I went to the school board meeting, and they had a presentation um, with the students when they went to Paris. And if y'all remember last year, that around this time, I was in Perry. But I'm here with you guys. It's even better. Oh, okay. Anyway. They had a presentation with the Paris and London, and um, it was nice. And you know, they put a little educational um, twist into it. And they also had a swearing in for the students that were that's going to be on the school board. And um, on the on December fifth at seven o'clock, the new school board members will be swearing in. Okay. <coughs> okay. That's it. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Your report. <coughs> All right, so towards the end of November, we had our Rotary Performing Arts Scholarship Competition um, at the Hill School. And I want to congratulate all the um, kids who performed. It was pretty amazing. I think our youngest was an eighth grader, and she played the harp. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was wonderful. If you haven't <coughs> gone, it's a free event, and it's like it's a concert. So next year, come out and enjoy the students' um, in our area. Um, I also met with Jerry Gorski, who's engineer slash builder of Sly Fox. Um, and I met with him and the county commissioners at the Stone School, um, which is another building that he's renovated. Um, he does a lot of uh, work on municipal buildings and um, he gave a very generous donation to the Pottstown Cluster, and thanks to Representative Cerisi, threw in, um, in addition to his prize, threw in lunch with me, so I was able to fulfill that. Um, and we had a meeting with Pottstown Community Action, Hobart's Run, the uh, Housing Coalition, and uh, Pottstown Area Health and Wellness Foundation to discuss collaboration on the Love Your Block program. So I think everyone's interested, and hopefully um, beginning of, uh, towards the end of the year, beginning of next year, we can work on uh, splitting out pieces uh, for those organizations to um, start working on. And, oh, Jim and Sue's High Street Stakes opened at the terminal. I have to say, pretty, pretty awesome stakes. Trinita and I went. Um, I meant to take a picture of mine, but all that was left yeah, was no, the pepper. Too, I so. <laughs> Sorry. I ate it. Um, and on that night, Trinita and I discovered, and I know uh, Peggy talks about it, but I don't know why we've never we been there. We missed it. Um, the Cosmic Art Studios. Yeah. We just walked in. They were having a psychedelic <laughs> it was night. Amazing. Um, it is so amazing in there. And every Thursday, they have... Um, community family art um, art night every Thursday at 7 p.m. and they accept donations so they're all by donation there it's you can get jewelry. teas and jewelry and <laughs> look at beautiful art it's really oh, yeah. really mm -hmm. neat so I highly suggest if you haven't been there it is in what is that it called? was the dance, the dance studio thing. Where the Badminton Smashville building is? It's right on top. Right next to the terminal. Yeah, right yes. next to the terminal. Yeah. yeah. Next to the church. Yeah. Yeah, it's a yes. church. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's right there. Right there. All right. So that, nice. that was. We had fun. Yeah, we did. <laughs> that was November. Um, now we're in December. We had our community leaders breakfast meeting um, today at the Pottstown Integrated Wellness Complex, a.k.a. the YMCA. Okay. So thank you, Chuck Galati. Um, thank you, Peggy, because she's already gone through this list for Saturday. Yeah. We will all be spending from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. downtown with Trinita for her birthday. Um, You're all welcome. <laughs> with snacks and tree lightings and all sorts of things so 
I don't need to go into that. Oh, and also on Saturday, um, from 4 to 7 is the spaghetti dinner for the Cub Scout Pack 146 at 750 North Evans Street. $9 for adults, 8 for seniors, 6 for kids. If you would like more information, you can go speak to Mr. Rose. Um, Saturday, December 14th, from 10 to 1 is the Children's Holiday Party at Sunnybrook. Um, I know you've all seen this flyer, the Children's Holiday Project. Um, there are trees all over town, although I am not sure if they have all been uh, taken. But there are angel trees all over town with cards on them for families um, so that you can select to um, select a card to get a family a gift and donations for um, for food boxes and I'd also like to I'd like to thank everyone who's who's put effort into this this has grown tremendously mm -hmm. um, I'd also like to thank um, the Pottstown Rotary Club who last minute has um, stepped up and picked up all the Ricketts Center uh, families and kids to make sure that they are also included in this. So that is at Sunnybrook, again, from 10 to 1 on the 14th. Sunday, the 15th, from 4.30 to 6.30, Joe Cerisi's uh, campaign kickoff will be at the Community Music School. At 775 West Main Street and Trap, the only reason I am mentioning it is because you see Mr. Cerisi in Pottstown, in the borough, all the time. Mm -hmm. um, he's been a tremendous asset to our borough, and I believe he will be singing, mm -hmm. um, so I think it's worth going. Um, I'm also will be meeting with Mike Bowman from Valley Forge Tourism later this month to discuss some uh, economic opportunities in the borough. Um, save the date. Oh. Don't forget, weather permitting, January 1st is our annual polar bear plunge. And I expect to see everyone up here. Oh, I don't do, no, oh, yes. I, I don't do cold water. I, I don't. Here. TV. No, no. Watch on TV. Please come out. No, it is a tradition. We yeah. all dress up in costumes, tutus, whatever you like. Um, some members of our community wear speedos. It's interesting. Um, uh, okay. I would not be partaking in the <laughs> I'm with. No, but you weren't. I did the tutu. You did rock the tutu last year. It's pretty <laughs> awesome. I have pictures. <laughs> um, also, no, one more save the date is Saturday, February 29th. Um, is the luncheon and Susicool, the musical gala at Potsdam High School from uh, lunch starts at 12 and the musical starts at 2. Um, I want to say thank you to Rupert Elementary's third graders for the fabulous thank you cards that they sent um, me when they came and did their uh, tour of the borough and the police department and Judge Palladino. Um, it really cheered me up. I opened them uh, while I was uh, on a layover in Phoenix and uh, it was nice having a part of pasta with me while I was not here for the holidays. I got four cards. You got like 20. I yeah, she had a lot. got she had more a lot. than that. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> your name was mentioned in a lot of them. That was nice. See, mm -hmm. Ryan? <laughs> um, oh, and I learned today that Robert Teller's Okinawan Karate Academy at the complex, AKA the YMCA, from Monday through Thursday has evening classes um, for karate, kids, teens, and adults. For more information, I have a flyer up here if you are interested, or you can go to, uh, oh, I can't read, oh my goodness. Bless you. Facebook, Robert Tellers, OKA. So it's, yes. <laughs> or I have a flyer up here, or see Levi Wolf. And I think that's it. Oh, because and I if I missed anything, which I'm sure I did, <coughs> listen. <laughs> check Facebook. Check Trinita's Facebook. <laughs> check Dawn's Facebook. Check I Pick Pot Sound's website. Check Go Force website. Check the Burroughs website. That's it. Okay. <laughs> How about a 
manager's report. All right, well, I'll keep it pretty short since uh, <laughs> mostly everybody covered a lot of the things that I was going to mention it. anyway, so I'll give some of the more um, managerial updates. Update on trash tote delivery. They have begun this week, so if you recall, under our new contract with Mascara, we're getting new dark gray totes that will better blend in to the, to the surrounding uh, environment. Um, driving down Adams Street this morning, I hardly even noticed them. Um, just a couple items on that. They will be delivered to, to your uh, property address, which is typically the front of your house. However, if your regular trash location is in the rear, you will need to move that tote to the rear um, so that it's picked up at your normal trash location. And um, also, uh, we've, we've received a couple reports that some of the totes are, are, are a little um, mis misformed, and this is because they were stacked and shipped uh, over a long uh, period of time. So uh, we are told that they will come back to form when the weather heats up. So we would just ask that if your lid isn't closing all the way to kind of hold off for a couple months, but if, it, if in the springtime comes and it's not closing, let us know and we can figure out how to, how to get a replacement out there. And then also just another reminder, starting January 1st, one bulk item per property per week will be picked up. Um, Justin, is that in addition to the other two totes that we have, or will they be picking one of them up? Yeah, I'm those? sorry. I should have mentioned that the red that. totes will be picked up by Mascaro and taken and taken away. I don't know when that okay. will occur. It seems like it's not occurring on the same day that the gray totes are delivered, but I would expect that next time they empty your red tote shortly thereafter that they would um, come and take it away. So continue to put the red tote out with trash until, until. they Yes. Well, yeah. for right now, they, they so both don't, are there. So don't put trash in the gray one until they take the red one away. I'll the gray one right away. They will be following up on trash days and trying to cover most of them. Okay. So yes. They're in the process of taking the reds up now, but certainly once they move back in the yards or wherever they go, uh, they're not going to go get them. So yeah. they need to put them out on trash day. The, the guys who are picking up the reds can't keep up with the guys who are putting the grays out. Sure. All right. All right. So, so yeah, don't put anything in the reds, or else it's going to make it harder for them to pick it up when they do come to pick it up. So we need to take the trash out that's in there now. See that, right? Yep. No. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And clean out the trash can while you're at it. No, you don't. You don't have to do that. I've just messed with it. And please remember, you know, it's a good idea to put your property address on the new tote and also record your serial number so that if it's ever misplaced, you'll have an easier time of trying to track it down. Mm -hmm. Next is um, parking permits. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be hopefully um, presenting a idea to, to council for the parking permits uh, next month, but um, in the interim, uh, we are going to start to uh, roll out a, a new um, parking permitting system. It really doesn't um, change the old system too much. Previously for on-street parking permits, we had a blue zone and a green zone. Um, those zones are going to remain the same. The rates are going to remain the same in those zones. Um, however, in the green zone in the downtown, we did add um, a business employee on-street parking permit. Um, the price of that is previously what the lot permits were at, I think, $325 a year. However, um, we really want to discourage long-term parkers like businesses and residents from parking in the downtown, so that's why that fee is so high. So we've also come up with a reduced fee for $150 a year. You can park in any one of the um, borough-owned lots, number one through six. They're also available on a monthly or a quarterly time basis as well. These permits are open to anyone, whether you're a resident, resident, business, visitor, doesn't matter if you live in the borough, um, anyone can buy the lot permits. Um, so please uh, take advantage of that because that, that is a new change from, from before and basically was in response to some of the business owners downtown that wanted a um, more reasonable um, way to be able to pay for their employee parking. 
And um, you said half a year is, what was the prices again? I'm sorry. What did you say? It's um, quarter. It's $15 a month, $40 a quarter, and um, I, don't, I don't have the six month, but $150 a year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then also the, um, the part routes are going to be changing for our public bus system. There, we had a presentation several months ago. Those route changes are expected to go into effect on January 2nd, so new um, schedules and new maps uh, are out soon. So please um, go visit the website and pick them up and familiarize yourself with the new routes. Tomorrow I'll be joining with um, the superintendent at uh, Pottstown to participate in a press conference regarding the um, negative impacts of economic development when you don't have fairly funded schools. Um, so we're participating um, on, in that press conference with uh, several other uh, school districts that are in similar uh, situations that, that we are. So just another way that we're working together. And then uh, keep your, uh, your eyes out uh, February. March time frame, we are targeting a joint meeting with the school district. That's yep. it. Very good. Uh, now, on to newer business. Uh, Rickett Center lease agreement. Mr. Lenhardt. Me too. Okay, I know that uh, there's a lot yet on the agenda for tonight, so I do want to try to keep this uh, brief, but I also want to make sure that I don't shortchange uh, any of the summary I'm going to give of the features for this agreement. That's what I'm going to give to you. Now, uh, you should all have a copy in your packets right. so you can follow along. I'd invite you to do so. The idea here is to give you a full picture of uh, what the agreement is that's been negotiated so you have a full understanding of it so a decision can be made on it uh, promptly to ensure that things move along. Uh, on a time frame that gives us uh, an opportunity to get things running promptly in 2020. So this is a new agreement. Uh, keep in mind, uh, previous agreements you've discussed, those are gone. This is derivative of the RFQ. Uh, so that, that's what we've been referencing and putting this together. So moving swiftly through this, uh, we have the preamble. You can sort of go through that. It's got your usual pieces. But moving on to section one, there's the term. Uh, the term is two years, beginning January 1st, 2020. Uh, it does provide for one additional two-year term renewal, and that, uh, if you look, um, references paragraph 11, provision set forth, and that is subject to approval of council. Uh, so you'll have opportunity to approve the renewal process in two years. A little different from the previous one. Uh, section 2, uh, administration, this is where we talk about uh, the guidelines for operation and references in 2.1 Exhibit A. Exhibit A is the RFQ, so if you look at your RFQ, it sets the standard for what we want operations to be. Um, and in Part A of that, it says uh, operates on a year-round basis and then defines a minimum for serving community youth, a minimum of 38 hours weekly, including operations on Saturdays and Sundays. We already have it, have it from Lydia that that is part of their plan, uh, but just so you know, that is included in this agreement for what the expectation is for operations. Um, the MS, uh, that's Port Town Multi-Service, uh, agrees to administer, operate, and maintain center with its own resources. Um, next important feature is Section 2.3. It talks about uh, establishing a community advisory board. This is something that uh, BMS and the borough talked about jointly, something we want to do. Obviously, that's going to incorporate folks from the community. Um, an advisory board like that, what we're asking for is that uh, the borough have two appointees on there, and from there on out, um, the members of that board would be um, comprised of um, uh, representatives uh, from the residential community, um, Potsdam local organizations and organizations as recommended by uh, the borough or BMS. Ultimately, BMS uh, is going to choose that advisory board with the exception of those two individuals we're saying is going to be appointed. Uh, the idea being that there can be a staff person and a council person. But that will be uh, up to you to decide. Um, let's move along here to three, organization. Um, 
no big surprises there. Uh, the expectation is BMS is going to set rules. There'll be a review process with us. We're going to agree on them mutually, but obviously it's their show to run. That's part of their response to the RFQ and moving forward. Um, moving on to Section 4 finances, uh, we are maintaining uh, the uh, borough contribution of $40,000. Uh, we do feel that that's important to make sure that uh, we are invested in the operation of that center uh, for the citizens of this community. Uh, it's going to be a team effort, and that's what's important. Uh, you'll see with this agreement, with working going forward, and also with that contribution. Um, note at the end of Section 4, two additional funds that are contributed by third parties specifically for the center may only be utilized for the center and the programming of the center. That is addressed directly, and that's relative to gifts that are earmarked for that. Um, Maintaining finances, uh, we're asking BMS uh, to maintain uh, financial reports that we have access to them so that at any given time we can have a picture of, of the finances. I know that's a question that we get asked often. Um, how are you ensuring that things are being run appropriately? We have the provisions for that information to be gathered, uh, both in Section 4 and also through the Community Advisory Board, this inroads there. Um, so that is addressed in Section 4. Um, Similarly, uh, requesting a copy of uh, the organization BMS's audit annually. They get that anyway, um, so they've agreed to provide us a copy of it so that you know, we know what their standings are. Um, let's see. Five. Uh, section five, there's nothing I really want to highlight in terms of features there. Section six, uh, facilities, you can see there it outlines uh, who's responsible for what with respect to the center. There's nothing that much changes for that. We're still um, mostly giving operations and maintenance over to uh, Boyertown Multi Service in this case, and we maintain responsibility uh, for the primary structure as would any uh, landlord. Um, And really, that is it for the features I wanted to update, with the exception of the last one being Section 7. If you go to 7.2, uh, we did maintain the structure where a monthly report of activities and events should be prepared, so that that is a feature of uh, the ongoing committee of the whole meeting, so we can keep our finger on the pulse of what's going on at uh, the Ricketts Center. Um, otherwise, from there, you have uh, your information on what the stand information rather on what the insurance requirements uh, we're asking for, and then uh, your standard indemnity clauses in Section 9. So that, uh, those are the primary features of this. Um, if you have any questions, this would be a good time. Um, I think I'm very satisfied with the relationship um, that uh, I see blooming with Boyertown Multi-Service Unit. I think there's good things ahead uh, with respect to operation of that center and, and how it could do an outreach uh, to reach a greater part of the community. Yeah, I think I think Michael really hit it on the head. You know, this is going to be a, a, a collaborative approach, um, especially at first, because we want to make sure uh, that that Boyertown Multi Service is is really um, speaking with the people that they need to speak to in this community um, and really engaging uh, with the community. So while while you know truly. Um, this is going to be their center to run. You know, we heard the community loud, loud and cr clear that there needs to be um, more, uh, more of a, a role for the borough. And you know, I, Michael and I have t discussed that in length. And you know, we are going to be much more involved going forward than we have been before. But you know, make no mistake, Boyertown Multi Service is the organization that does does run the center. But we have. Uh, experience so far a very collaborative relationship and I think our main focus at first is going to be to um, again uh, get this steering committee uh, going um, and um, make sure we have all the right voices um, in, in the room so that we can really start to talk about how <coughs> we make this center everybody's center No further questions. Uh, we'll list this for action on Monday evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Number 11, ordinance, chapter 18, local limit study evaluation. All right, so we're requesting advertisement of this ordinance in accordance with EPA guidelines to address changes to local pollution limits, um, mainly as they apply to industrial users sending wastewater to our wastewater treatment plant. Um, in the fall of 2017, a, a local limit study was conducted in the borough uh, because surrounding townships, 
send uh, their sewage to be treated at, at our plant. Uh, this study also included Lower, Upper, and West Pottsgrove Townships in accordance with the MPDS permit issued um, uh, to the borough of Pottstown. Um, after much communication with the EPA and analysis of the local limit study results, the EPA is recommending that the current local limits remain unchanged. However, they are recommending that new limits for Molly Bednam and selenium are added. The local limits have been developed and accepted by both EPA and the Pots Pottstown Wastewater Treatment Plant. Um, and the borough and the surrounding townships within the next four months are, are required to uh, adopt the local limits into ordinance. So this advertisement that we're requesting would begin the 30-day um, public comment period. And we're also working closely with the contributing townships to help them update their ordinance in accordance with these um, guidelines as well. Okay. Very good. We'll list that for Monday. 12 is the maintenance hangar temporary lease assignment. Yeah, so the current lease that uh, uh, we have for the maintenance uh, hangar uh, at the airport is with uh, Fly Elite. And uh, that lease is set to expire on December 31st, 2019. At this point, we're seeking council approval for a temporary lease assignment to a different entity, Dave Pasquale of Pasquale Aviation, mm -hmm. who currently subleases a portion, a portion of the maintenance hangar from the fixed-based operator, Fly Elite. Mr. Pasquale has been operating a successful airplane maintenance business in this location for several years, and his business has now grown to the point that he now needs the full area of the maintenance hangar to continue these operations. The lease would allow the borough to be in full compliance with FAA and BOA funding, uh, which requires the, the entirety of the space to be used for aircraft maintenance purposes only. All conditions of the current lease with Fly Elite would be retained and transferred to Pasquale Aviation. Um, and as this, this new assignment indicates, this lease would be temporary uh, for a period of 12 months. However, uh, the agreement does mandate that um, the parties work in good faith to establish a long-term lease that we can present for council's consideration. Okay. Uh, if I can summarize it, uh, council needs to understand the tenant is not changing. Uh, it'll be the same party that's leasing, but they will be leasing directly from the borough, not through Fly Elite. Oh, okay. Is that it? Oh. Yeah, for well, right hangar. now, I mean, one of the tenants is changing. Um, Fly Elite um, currently uh, subleases only a portion of the hangar to um, Pasquale Aviation. Well, okay. Yeah. So, but yeah, one of the tenants will not change. One, one of the, the, the tenants will, will move back. And Pasquale, he's, he's going to take over the whole unit. Correct. Right. Okay. And instead of subleasing, lease <clears throat> directly from the borough. Right. If there's no question, we'll list this for action. Uh, 13, cable franchise agreement. It's that yeah. time. Our, our current um, franchise agreement with, with Comcast is, is set to expire in March of 2020. Um, per the FCC regulations, municipalities are permitted to receive franchise fees to allow cable broadcasts within their community. And um, just to be clear, because we've gotten some questions about this before, the franchise agreement is not exclusive to Comcast. Other providers are free to negotiate separate franchise agreements uh, with, with the borough. Um, however, for reasons unknown, we have not been approached by any other cable providers um, for a franchise. Uh, if you recall, several years back, we were in discussions uh, with Verizon as well for a franchise. However, at that time, they determined they were not interested. And, you know, I can't really point to why, but it would seem that many of the other providers right now are focusing on building fiber and internet infrastructure, uh, which coincides with the technological shift uh, to more streaming video services. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we're not asking council to take any action um, on, on the uh, agreement that you have in front of you, uh, but we wanted to update you on the current status of our negotiations with Comcast so that we're in a good position come March when we're ready to 
um, sign a new agreement and to make sure that we're on the right track with council. <coughs> so one of the changes since the last time of our, our we signed this agreement was FCC Order 621, uh, which was issued sometime, sometime in 2016. And among other things, it, it sets a cap on the annual franchise fee at 5%. The order also sets auditing requirements for the technology grants received from Comcast to ensure that equipment purchased with these monies are used strictly for audio and video um, purposes. Therefore, um, generally the order limits some of the items that we could realistically uh, negotiate. So at your desk tonight, you have a red line draft of the agreement currently. And uh, just to briefly summarize what's in there um, so far are the following. A 10 year term, uh, we feel that due to all the changes uh, right now with technology and the industry in general, that it would be in our best interest to go with a longer um, term to lock in the, the franchise for a longer period of time. And uh, we would uh, also ask that we get the maximum 5% uh, franchise fee, which in 2019 was, in 2019, we don't have the, the fourth quarter in yet, but it's estimated to be 390000 or just a little, little bit under that. The agreement would also uh, propose to remove one, one PC TV channel, channel 98, uh, leaving PCTV with the remaining two channels. The removal of uh, free cable service to Borough Hall and, and the school district buildings that we have under our current agreement um, would be removed. Uh, we don't use those cable connections here, and uh, I was in, uh, I did run this by the uh, superintendent at, at the school district, and he's kind of in the same boat that we are in that they don't really use them that much, and that um, there are other options available um, to them. So he was okay with us uh, taking that out. We're also requesting a technology grant. Um, there's two parts to this agreement, the, the franchise fee and the technology grant. So we're re requesting a technology grant in the amount of $65,000. That would be a one-time grant over the course of the 10 years, which would be used to pay for upgrades to audio and video technology in the council meeting room. Uh, and council chambers, such as projectors, automatic screens, voice recording upgrades, a video conference set up in council chambers, LCD monitors uh, for use as message boards in the borough hall lobbies, as well as um, wireless connectivity for presenters. Approximately $15,000 of that grant will be used to pay for an extension of a return line to the Potts Grove High School to accommodate the relocation of PCTV, which occurred last month. So if you recall PCTV, um, which we um, have an agreement with to run the channels, uh, was, was running out of Potts Grove, or I'm sorry, Pottstown High School. Uh, mm -hmm. They had apparently come up with some space constraints and um, PCTV decided to relocate out to uh, Potts Grove High School. So there was a cost incurred for that fiber extension. However, it is going to be covered by Comcast through the technology grant. I believe so. <coughs> okay, so that's a summary and we need to take no action till March? Um, February or March. Okay, yeah. very good. How about the PPOA contract? <laughs> All right. Oh. We'll let them. We'll let them okay. Thank you all. You you can come back Monday for part two. Oh, I was going to relieve with them. You can't go. I know. All right. This has to do with the police contract. Yeah. So I'm thrilled to announce that uh, the PPOA has executed their CBA contract, which we have been in negotiations for in the past six months. Some highlights of the contract are as follows. This will be a five-year contract. There will be the creation of one additional step in the pay grade sequence, which increases the amount of time uh, for an officer to reach the full pay grade. Renaming the health care plans will also occur as a part of this contract um, so that we can give them more of a generic 
uh, name so that the borough has more of an ability to negotiate with other providers in the future that would provide the same health care benefits. The elimination of post-retirement medical care for hi officers hired after 2020. As you know, this is currently is over a $20 million liability for the borough um, that we'll be able to slowly start taking off of our books uh, over the next couple decades. Um, just a reminder, existing officers will still receive this benefit. It, this just applies to new officers hired after 2020, I should say after January 1st, 2020. Um, for health insurance, those um, with, with uh, spouses that are able to obtain health insurance elsewhere, the borough would offer an incentive payment of up to $5,000 of their current health care premium uh, if they uh, take their spouse's uh, insurance uh, through another entity. In exchange uh, for all of this, <coughs> we're offering salary increases of 4% in 2020, 4% in 2021, 4% in 2022. I'm sorry, 3.5% um, in, in, in 2022. Yeah, it's 4.4, 4.3.5, 3. 3% for the last year. Yeah, that's, that's what I had. So 4% 2020 through 2022, 3.5% in 2023, and 3% in 2024, which would um, conclude the contract. We also removed the residency requirement from this contract, which, which was important to um, recruitment and attracting top talent. And there are no changes to the current health care uh, premium contributions. So those, that isn't everything, but those are the, the big picture highlights. And if I missed anything, feel free to chime in. So I think, again, I mean, um, you know, we, we really worked hard to, to, to get to a, a, a place that both were, were comfortable with. We took, uh, as we did with the AFSCME union, we took a longer term approach to this. Um, you know, we're paying a little more up, up front, but over the long term, that $20 million liability that we have over our head will start to dwindle and put us in a better position going forward. Okay. If there are no questions, we'll list this for action Monday evening. And they did sign this afternoon. Correct? They did sign this okay. afternoon. All right. So it's just awaiting council signature. Fifteen license fee for amusement devices. You <coughs> were um, I can I can I can start with that. Okay. Uh, currently, we have uh, licensing fees of I think twenty five dollars for for any any amusement machine in in the borough. Um, we're also experiencing a, an uptick on some of the uh, gambling machines in, in the convenience stores as well, mm -hmm. um, which we're not sure is accounted for under our, um, our, our current licensing uh, requirements for, for amusement machines. Um, there's some thought that the ordinance that we have now is a bit for amusement machines <coughs> is a bit antiquated. Um, you know, especially when it's kind of really a ancillary use at a at a cafe or, or a coffee shop where you know they're providing the claw bars for the kids. Um, we talk about being more business friendly and um, uh, trying to do things to just improve our our image a little bit. And from the feedback I've been getting from the business owners and from paid. Um, this, this vending machine license is just one of those really little things, and we only make about $3,000 in revenue off of it a year, um, but it's one of the little things that really just gets under people's skin and kind of just, mm. just rubs, them, rubs them the wrong way. Um, so I think we should take a close look at whether we need that, and also, um, on the flip side, whether or not we need to more closely regulate these, these uh, gambling uh, machines. So, Dan, I don't know if you had anything else additional to offer. 
Now, I, I would add that uh, since an, it is an existing ordinance, it needs to be enforced. And uh, we talked about it briefly in ad hoc so, uh, right. ordinance review. So, if you want to, yeah, and, and the, the numbers I remember was that uh, our net revenue was about eighty-five hundred. Yeah, I thought it was more like eight, eight to ten thousand dollars. Yeah, if I remember correctly. Uh, the other thing is, there's what I've been told, at least I didn't count them myself, that there's a tremendous increase in gambling type machines that have come to the borough, and uh, it could become something significant to our revenue stream. So we can all read through this and uh, see what our thoughts are on Monday. So I guess the end, the, the goal here would be to um, provide the solicitor with, with direction to take a look at this. Right. On Monday. Mm -hmm. So you're saying it was 80, what, what, what was that for you? I heard it was close to eight to $10,000 so we could. And that's for, and that's for the, the gambling machines? To no, that, that's without those. The revenue. No, the revenue. The revenue. Revenue. This is for all coin, all coin operated um, um, vending machines. The licenses uh, are tw they're twenty. I think they're twenty five dollars. Is that correct? They're all different. They're all different. So okay. Okay. So I mean, some of these things are kind of antiquated, but. Um, Definitely think it's it warrants taking a look at it. Yeah, I, I uh, the the growth that I've seen, stopping by various places. I mean, you know, it's, it's only going to get more and more over time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, people will pull, uh, pull up gas stations and there for hours on these machines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, maybe something we, we need to look into. You've said that the, as well. The, the current regulations on the books have not been looked at or updated in probably more than 20 years. If you read some of the things that we attempt to regulate, you know, they're kind of antiquated, out of date, maybe don't even exist anymore. And there's been certainly a, a inundation of new types of machines that probably aren't specifically recognized in our current ordinance. So I think you need to make a decision as to whether you want to include those things and how you want to expand them to the extent they're not regulated by the state or some other entity. So this is your opportunity to take a look and see what you want to do as far as um, make changes. Now would be the time to at least look at it. Okay. So we can hear more comment on Monday evening. Uh, we won't be taking any action other than to advise the solicitor at that time to go forward. Okay, 16 Reading Gravity Racing Soapbox Race. Yes, so they're uh, requesting a race on uh, Wilson Street, um, starting at North State Street and ending at Farmington Avenue. And the dates they plan to do this are 524, 621, 96, and 1011, 2020. They also have rain dates of 531, 628, 913, and 1018. This would occur between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. And the entity is Reading Gravity Racing League. Okay. And they've been here before. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll list that for Monday evening. Uh, Year-end items. Uh, Monday evening, we need to adopt a 2020 proposed budget. Uh, you have the latest figures before you. Is there anything you want to add to that? The yeah. late, latest changes, reductions. Yeah. yeah, I can go over some of the latest changes. So um, the good news is, is that we, we were able to get uh, the budget down to 3.83% uh, for a total mills of 13.161. As re if you recall, we had previously presented to council a budget of 4.26%. Uh, so we had a couple things that helped that contributed to this this coming down. The main driver uh, of that was uh, the health care cost, uh, which uh, reduced uh, two hundred and and and, and sixteen thousand um, dollars from this. Uh, we were previously budgeting about a seven percent uh, increase in health care, and um, we're now budgeting a zero percent increase in health care for this year. So we're doing we're doing good with uh, 
the improvements that we're making on our health care side to contain costs. We also um, were informed that uh, the police will be receiving new revenue um, for a police DEA task, for task force grant and also an FBI task force grant, um, both totaling uh, $36,000, so that's new revenue there. Um, we'll also be applying for a, um, a park strategic plan grant, uh, and that's a $20,000 change. Uh, one of the increases uh, to the budget uh, was for a, a paid internship. Um, we, we had a little more discussion on that and um, what, we, what we really need there is a, is a paid um, administrative intern. So we'd like to increase the uh, salary uh, for that to, to $30,000. Um, again, this would be an internship position that would probably start um, sometime late in the, in the first quarter. Uh, last increase that we had, um, dental insurance um, increased from uh, $9,900 per month to $10,500 per month. So those were the big changes since we presented the budget last time. Okay. So if there are no questions at this time, we'll list that for approval Monday evening. Correct. Yep. Yes, not 23. That's that's the other municipality. <laughs> What's our uh, continuing um, assessment situation? Is it still is it still declining, or is it leveling off, or what's, what's that situation? Like? Unfortunately, it's still declining. At the beginning of the year, it was looking good. Uh, it was looking like we were going to be level. Um, unfortunately, at the end of the year, we, we got hit with a lot of assessments, and um, I forget the amount, the value amount that it brought brought us down. Oh, uh, we lost 1.648 million in assessments, which oh. equated to a, a loss in revenue of about sixty-seven thousand dollars. So that's like one position, if you want to think about it that way. Um, however. There, it seems like the attorneys that are that are sending letters out to everyone, encouraging them to go for a reassessment, um, are really kind of churning through the last and, of. And politicians uh, are doing it too. Uh, yeah. I don't know about that. But yeah. It see. seems like they're really kind of really at the at the bottom of the barrel. They're not catching as many fish, or they're, they're not catching as many big fish, hmm. but they're catching more little fish hmm. and throwing them in, into the barrel. So that's kind of the best way to explain it. They're, they're doing a volume business right now. So the silver lining in that is that the, the assessment reductions that we're seeing are for far less of an amount than what we've been seeing before. So I just wanted to clarify that 1.6 million was just from the October and November. Okay. The whole yeah. year has been close to <clears throat> So we're cautiously optimistic that this, this could start to level if we have a good year, um, property value-wise, ne next year. But that's a big if. Main thing is, is that we need to keep the pedal to the metal on economic development. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, also for Monday, we'll need to adopt an ordinance to fix the tax rate. Uh, based on the latest information. C uh, will be an amendment for a fee resolution. I, mean, I think there's a copy of that in your pack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? What's missing? The, um, the, the changes to the parking permit uh, fees oh. is missing from that draft, but I just went over okay. it tonight. You did. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. So we will include that on the list for Monday. Yep. Now, as far as the, the fee resolution, we did address this in our finance uh, meeting earlier today. Uh, and looking through it, it this was not a, a quick apply some factor to last year's rates. Um, 
when I asked the question about how it was developed, each department got to examine the cost of performing those duties, and the uh, fees were adjusted upward or downward accordingly. So it isn't that they just went through and said, I will raise everything 10%. It's all based on actual cost. It's not that the borough makes money on it. It's just we're covering our own costs. So uh, we'll list that for Monday evening. And then the 2020 council meeting schedule. Uh, I think Jenny will provide us with that. She'll tell us to agree. Yeah. All right, upcoming board vacancies for next year. The Blighted Property Review Committee, there's one for four one-year terms. Uh, Construction Cord Code Board of Appeals, an alternate. Historic Architectural Review Board, one vacancy. Uh, there's one application from Julie Marburger. No. Oh, that's her resignation. Oh, okay. So, so we need someone there. There's one opening on, on the whole. One there. Planning Commission, uh, one four-year term. Borough, Pottstown Borough Authority, one five-year term. And, uh, and we have two applicants for the Borough Author Authority, uh, uh, Carol Kopp and um, Michael Benner, who is currently um, an authority member. Okay. Uh, we need one for the vacancy board and one three-year term for a zoning hearing board. Okay. How about comments from the citizens present? And <coughs> okay, and a reminder to those who want to address council, there is a three-minute time limit. Ed Kelly, please. Street, and they see stuff like this. <coughs> uh, 
Okay. So Thank you. So you guys can take care of this, maintain them like we were told that the borough was going to maintain them. We would appreciate it very much. Or just take them down. Thank you. Just for Thank future you. reference, um, typically when uh, there's, there's an issue, whether it's a street, a sign, a delineator, call Public Works, we'll take care of it. You don't have to bring them in. We appreciate it, but you don't have to bring them in. Okay, next. Johnny Corson, please. Evening. Hey, Johnny Corson, President Pasta. President Pasta on NAACP. The decision has been made for the Rickett Center. But I have to come. I wasn't going to say nothing, but I have to clear my name. I did not make that statement that I backed for town taking over the Rickett Center. Statement I made because that would be as like me as president of the NAACP going against the executive committee of the NAACP. We voted to give it to Parks and Rec. We wanted you to give it to Parks and Rec and let Warrior Town, why they would say anybody come underneath and support Parks and Rec. That was false. It was a misunderstanding. I don't know how it got out that way, but that should not have been said at that council meeting. I took a beating. People called me and said, How dare you? Who do you think you are to make that decision? without talking to us. That's number one. Number two, to say taxes. When you mentioned the word taxes, everybody knows that once you say you have to raise taxes, people won't go in up war. Mm -hmm. That was not fair. Taxes did not have to be raised to get the Senate to the Parks and Recs. They would not have to be raised. And like I said to that council person, you need to get off your butt and do your job. Go to Health and Wellness Foundation, go to the Hill School, go to Hobart's Run. They could have gave you the money to offset taxes. Or Town could have came in and helped Parks and Recs run the building. Why did we say that's what we wanted? That's what the community does. To take it outside, you guys made that decision. But that is unfair the way I see it. That is not fair what happened. For this side of the room to believe in the borough and to believe in Parks and Recs, which we pay taxes for, that side of the room to say no. That disturbs me. That's very disturbing. And since everybody's saying we care about the kids and we hope to see the community involved, since that side voted for Wardtown, has that side been down to the Wicked Center to help with the kids? Has that side volunteered to run any programs to help the kids? Has that side volunteered for Christmas next Saturday with the kids? I'm very confused and I'm very disturbed. And I'm actually. I put myself out there, I believe in Pottstown. I thought that for once we could come together as a community. This vote that you guys did showed me that you really don't want to be a community. You really don't want to be a community. And that's very sad. And I'm going to say thank you to this side of the room for believing and listening to the citizens and trying to believe in your borough government and your parks and rec department. Because I believe Mike would do a beautiful job. With the assistance of other organizations underneath them. And we're doing the same thing that's going on right now. With Boy Town running it, the same thing could have happened with Parks and Rex and Charles with Boy Town help. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Any more? Thank you. No further citizen comments. Okay. Uh, how about counselors' general discussion? Mr. Proskell. Oh, I just maybe cover reflect on <coughs> Mr. Corson's statement. I, mean, it's, I, I did mention that I talked to him that, that evening. I, you know, I hope I didn't give it for the. the Assumption that he was okay or was like the our decision necessarily, but I just mentioned mm -hmm. that I spoke to him, and uh, you know he wasn't necessarily happy about it, but I just said he was understanding. I guess if that's okay. All right, <laughs> Vice President Culp. Well, we have a very busy month here in Pottstown, and I hope a lot of our uh, uh, citizens uh, participate and come out to Pottstown and see what's going on because I'm getting a lot of very good reviews for Pottstown. And um, people out shopping, be aware of your surroundings. Um, I read something on Facebook that if you see, uh, at night, if you see uh, a woman with her children in a parking lot anywhere walking alone, please keep an eye on her to make sure she is safe to get to her car with her kids. Mm, and uh, that goes for anywhere in the country. So um, 
everybody enjoy your Christmas shopping, and we'll see you in a week. <laughs> Councilor Levitt. Pires. Um, I would like to say to something to the uh, many thanks to the people of the my war sex. It was a great honor to serve all of you, regardless of what someone te may tell you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve you. Many thanks to the members of PASTA, the Borough Council, who served me with me for four years. Thank you for your support, and I'm very proud to, to be the first Latina woman serving as a Borough PASTA. And I hope it will not be the last. Right. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Feliz Navidad and Proper Año Nuevo. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. Councilor Lindsay. Okay, so I guess I'm going to be short because Madam Mayor said everything, Peggy said everything, Justin said everything. Like, I feel like everybody's, before I was like, blah, 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 blah. now I don't, I'm just. I don't have nothing really to say, but I do have to have some to say. So, <laughs> okay, I was gonna say so, I was gonna say something about the breakfast um, at the carousel December fourteenth, um, but they said tickets were sold out. But I would check just to make sure. You never know. And of course, don't forget to look out for Santa December twenty first. Um, see, Chief said something about that. You know, so. <laughs> um, so don't forget to look out for that. I know my grandbaby loved looking out my bedroom window and, and looking and waving and stuff. And let's see, I will be going to Harrisburg um, December 18th. Um, they're having a rally there. Um, it's do, dealing with education and a little bit, some like their funding. Um, trying to think. Sorry, sorry. So, oh, and I will be there tomorrow at noon for the press conference. So if you have time, uh, it will be um, helpful for you guys to, you know, um, c attend this pre the press conference. Um, also, um, if you can just um, keep your thoughts and prayers for Potts Grove. Um, they had an incident there at the school. And um, just keep the school, the family, and the kids in your prayers. Um, and Carol and Rita, um, I um, gonna miss you guys. Uh, I appreciate the support because I was a new kid on the block, and you guys, you know, put me under your wing, and you were my female guidance. So um, I'm gonna miss you guys. So, but don't be no stranger. I want to see y'all out there in that rooting for you know. I want to see y'all still, Rita. <laughs> That's it. That's all I have. Mayor Hendricks. No, I've said enough. Thank you. Said enough. Okay. Right. I I really have not much to add, um, <clears throat> but I will address our TV audience um, since you won't be watching our Monday night program. <laughs> I, I just want to wish everyone a happy and safe New Year's, mm -hmm. Christmas, holidays. Uh, for the next 30 days, be safe, be happy, and we'll see you next year. Uh, there is no need for an executive session this evening. President, one. 
Can I say something before you finish? <laughs> Good. Okay, uh, for the first time, we'll be uh, Virgin Guadalupe and the Christ Episcopal on December 12th at 4 o'clock. That's will be mariachis in there, and there will be a Spanish service. That's I would like to, to invite everybody to, okay. to see as a new costume, Mexican in there, and they're going to be a, a Spanish food and a little bit of dancing and, and have a good time with everybody. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, that's it. TV yes. Land, we'll see you next year. Meeting adjourned.